How's it going everyone? It's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch. Delighted to be back with another review. Today it's a game called Darksiders War Mastered Edition, which has now been ported over to the Nintendo Switch. But is it as good as I remember all those years ago? Let's jump in and find out. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start this review slightly differently to how we usually do our normal format. And we're going to go into visuals and performance straight away. There's some switch things that I want to speak to you about and cover those off. And then I'll go into the rest of the review for those of you that have never played Darksiders before. So talking about the visuals and performance and how this game performs, Darksiders always looked good in the first place. And it's even better with the remaster that came out on other consoles in 2016 which was called the War Mastered Edition, which has now been ported to the Switch. Now, in its time, I always thought that it was a good-looking game in my view. Some may disagree, but I love the design, and these types of games really appeal to me in terms of their art style. You know, the war between heaven and hell. So much imagination runs through my mind when I think about games like this, and visually and conceptually, this, in my opinion, had it spot on. Now the performance of the game itself is really good, it's actually a delight. There is some slowdown, but this is mostly when the game auto saves and a few other sections from time to time. But in the options you can choose higher performance but sacrifice some visual fidelity or higher detail but at the expense of frame rate. I think it's the first time I've seen an option like this on a game on the Nintendo Switch and for those of you that love the numbers, here they are. Quality mode runs at 1080p docked and 720p handheld running at 30 frames per second. If you choose performance mode, you'll get the full 60 frames per second, but the resolution will take a hit. In docked mode, you'll be able to play this at 810p and 540p in handheld. Now, I've shown you footage of both of those while I've been talking about it, just so that you can compare. I filmed most of the review in quality mode to show the higher fidelity, but to be honest with you, I was quite happy to take the hit on the fidelity and run the game at a higher frame rate, especially in handheld mode. I wish more games would provide this option to the player, as I'm sure they would appreciate having a choice. So I really appreciated that this was here. And as this is a port of the War Mastered Edition, you do get the new look of pain, improved rendering, shadows, and post-processing. So that's great news. So for all of those players that have never played this game before, I'm going to talk about the story and then the gameplay. So you're War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and it transpires that you somehow messed up. Not only have you messed up, but you messed up big time. This is a real whopper. Not only have you mishandled the balance between heaven and hell, but you also ended up killing most of humanity in the process. You see, you're supposed to be an enforcer for the Charred Council that maintains peace and balance between heaven and hell. You're now a target of the most supreme powerful beasts and beings around. They tend to tread carefully around you, which is a sign they kind of still respect you. Well, sort of. Suffice to say, your journey begins with all your powers stripped and you have to prove to the powers that be that they are wrong about you. And you're not going to be a pawn in this game full of corruption though. The motivation here is clear. It doesn't take long for you to identify with our protagonist, our hero. And you'll have no sympathy for those that have tried to soil your name. Those that have wronged you and those that have tried to frame you. And slaying through the enemies feels even better because of this tie to the story. And I really enjoyed it. It actually got me really invested into the character. In terms of gameplay, playing this on the Switch after having completed the trilogy over the years, I had my doubts that this game would play well. I didn't doubt that the Switch could handle it, but we've had some poor ports lately and so my confidence took a slight hit. I can allay those fears right away. This game is as good as I remember it. It plays fantastically well on the Switch. And if you're looking for an action game which feels absolutely awesome with puzzles thrown in, loads of weapon upgrades and souls to collect, then look no further, especially if you've never played it before. This has to be added to your collection. Those that have played Darksiders will probably agree that it's a fantastic franchise, but I think most will agree that the first and second games were the best the argument usually between me and my friends comes down to which of those two was the best but for me I always argue that part one was slightly better than part two just think that the mix in part one between enemy rich environments puzzles and bosses was 
almost bloody perfect. Now, in the 16 plus hours it takes to complete the story, I never once felt bored and playing this in handheld is an utter joy that I didn't think I would care to experience again. But once I had this loaded on my Switch, I couldn't help staying up night after night into the early hours, taking war on a journey to clear his name. One of the things Darkseid has always had was a lot of button combinations to remember because there is so much you can do and at times the only frustration I had with this game, especially when using that targeting system and having to lock onto moving targets, this can be really fiddly on the Nintendo Switch especially in handheld mode and it's a game I 100% recommend you play with a pro controller if in docked. There's so many things to remember that can be a little bit overwhelming for newer players but Darksiders does a good job of introducing each new move or mechanic in bite-sized chunks and nearer the end of the game when having everything unlocked you will need to use almost every button on the switch and to be fair the developers have done a good job for the most part hacking and slashing and putting combos together to slice through demons feels great smooth the controls are mostly tight some of the controls don't always work though as intended but this was an issue the games always seemed to have especially with that pesky block button which always seemed a little laggy in my opinion and hard to time. It's easy enough to block, but timing it to produce that counter move is a real pain in the ass. Now one of the things I always loved also about Darksiders was when you would tear an enemy to shreds with your massive sword, they'd become low on health, and you could initiate a finishing move by simply tucking the A button on the switch anyway, highlighted above the enemy's head. You could argue it takes you out of the action a little bit while that sweet animation plays, automatically finishing off the foe, but it never became repetitive to me for some reason. I couldn't get enough of seeing those enemies ripped apart. For those of you that are more hardcore players, there are difficulty options which you'll want to ramp up as the game can be quite forgiving, a tad easy for some, not that this makes it any less enjoyable, and some of the bosses are a real challenge. It's not as complex as some of other games that you may have played recently, but honestly, it's fine by me and most gamers will be more than satisfied with its slightly more simplistic approach to fight. There are a number of differing weapons which help you defeat enemies, solve puzzles in the game. The melee attacks are of course dealt with by your sword, but you also have a boomerang type weapon which is handy for picking off enemies from afar or, and is used in clever ways for taking on some of the puzzles down in the depths. For example, having to aim your boomerang through flames and then onto a bomb to detonate the bomb, cause an explosion to smash through barriers. Battling the angels with a huge gun was as good as I remember it and having that mini game thrown in where you battled all things to get as many kills as possible was super enjoyable. The puzzles later on do get a little bit more complex and look more daunting from initial look, but work your way through and they're not as hard as you first think. There's all sorts of nice little surprises the game throws in to keep you interested and motivated. Environments will require jumping, leading to platform parts, climbing, hanging from rails and shuffling along, swimming as well as swimming deep down into those hidden rooms as well as fighting enemies in water. There'll be rooms where you have to beat enemies in a certain time frame. The game's way of implementing small tutorials in bite-sized chunks, which is excellent here. The puzzles to me were intriguing enough and the combat in every sense was satisfying. And that's not even talking about when you can turn into a demon and kill everything in your path with ease. As you get deeper into each dungeon, a massive boss fight awaits and god some of them are massive. They're fun to fight, each is different giving you a different challenge and there's also lots to explore off the beaten track and you'll often find chests with health souls or money souls. See the game's currency is all about souls, green souls give you health which can drop from enemies or can be found in chests, blue souls give you currency which you can upgrade your stuff with through the dark side as vendor. This same vendor allows you to also travel through the snake hole so you can get from one destination to another. Yellow souls fill up a small power meter so you can unleash these special moves you have equipped. So from a gameplay sense, I was very satisfied. Now the sound in Dark Souls has always been excellent. The council confers with demons now, does it? Let's lay down a few ground rules. Until this is over, you're a dog on a leash. From the voice acting in which the creatures talk in the deepest of voices, which truly sound like you'd soil yourself if you come across one of these bad boys on a dark night. Mark Hamill, as the Watcher, is a real standout, by the way. And the council will end you, both of you. I'm protected, Mark. And if I have to kick you, you'd better not bear your teeth. Understand? minute back there, I really thought you wanted to hurt me. 
I'll remember that. The sounds of crushing, slashing, throwing, and head ripping all sound as gross as they should. And honestly, I've never had any issues with the sound. I just wanted to see that it translated to the Switch just as well, and I'm happy to say that it has done. The atmosphere is matched with a dark, immersing soundtrack. In terms of value then, of course, it's more expensive on the Nintendo Switch. In the USA, you're looking at $29.99, and of course in pounds it's slightly cheaper in the UK. You can purchase this still in the Wii U for half the price, which did run at 1080p and 30 frames per second. Now, if you're a physical collector, you can purchase this game on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. On PS4 and Xbox, being two years old, it's only £15.99, so a lot more on the Switch, which is a slight shame. I think for anyone who's never played it and the Switch is their only console, then it's very much recommended. If you have another system and the Switch and portability isn't your prime motivation or focus, you might be better off getting the game elsewhere if you're still interested and haven't played it before. For me, I personally love taking this on the train, chilling on my bed in handheld mode, so really depends on your circumstances as to whether you think it's worth the extra. Despite the remaster, it's still an old game, but still a great one at that. So as my verdict, this is my favourite Darksiders game and playing it again on the Switch was a joy. I'm glad the port has been handled well and if you want action with some puzzles thrown in, great audio, decent visuals considering the age of the game, then I have no doubt you'll have an excellent time and still to this day fully recommend this game. The fact that there are some visual options is welcome. Yes, it's more expensive than on other systems. For that reason, maybe it's a harder sell for THQ, but I guess the sales figures will dictate whether that's true or not. For me, it's still a timeless game to play and an 8.5 out of 10. Really enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite Darksiders is if you've played the trilogy. If you haven't, is this a game that interests you? I'd really love to know and respond to your comments. If you're a new watcher here, then why not consider subscribing? Hit that bell notification so you know when our next review goes live. I'll put a selection of videos up for you to see what kind of videos we can make. And for all of those that continue to support us, we really do appreciate the time you take to watch our videos, comment, leave likes, and all of those sorts of things that are really important to us here at Switch Watch. We do really appreciate it. My name is Juan Romero from Switchwatch. Have a great week and a great weekend and I'll see you again on the next one. Take care.